Brent Abel, Web Tennis, back here with you on What's the Right Shot, episode number 19, and this is the answer segment uh, to this doubles point that we've been looking at the past couple of days. And I want to really kind of look at two things. Number one, we're definitely going to look at the shot that at the end of the point here that Phil plays, uh, but I want to also look at the shot that leads up to that. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that we could kind of pick apart here. Um, I do think that this one right here, Brian, Brian in, in, in most cases gonna, is going to take that, that volley. But I think he's a little concerned that when he sees Bill run around that, this, that there's a chance that Bill might, might take it up the line with that forehand. So he may get kind of frozen just a hair. You know, Phil ends up playing a tough in the middle stab volley just to get it back. And I know Brian, you know, would like to make sure that every time uh, Phil plays a shot, it's only going to be a backhand. And they'll hook that, you know, he'll be able to intercept those balls going to his forehand. Be that as it may, the point develops in such a way that, um, what, what I want us to look at is going to be this next shot right here. And this is going to be a lob from Bill. And here's what I see a lot, is I see Bill hit a really good lob. And what I'd rather see here with Paul, we already know that Bill's back here. And, and, and Bill can both, both Bill and Paul can be, you know, evaluating the depth of this uh, lob here to fill. But at some point, you know, you have to understand that as the guy drifts back further and further and further, he's not going to get much on this overhead as he does here. I mean, this ball, he doesn't even swing through it, and it's just, it's almost over Phil's head. All he can do is just tap it back. And if these two guys have sort of made that evaluation on this deep lob, that the best that Phil can do is sort of tap it back, or maybe a little bit better, which is to hit a pretty good overhead. You know, you you really want to be up here challenging that that overhead. And now that both guys are back, um, that opportunity is lost. However, what happens here is they do recognize the short ball early. And, you know, Bill plays the smart shot going cross court. And again, I, I think Brian... Brian kind of looks at this and wonders, you know, why am I not taking this ball? Because, well, I, actually, I'm wrong. Okay, it's not this one that he could have taken because that one was hit cross court. Um, it's possibly this one right here that he maybe could have picked off and done something with, but it gets by him, and now we've got this situation where Phil is stretched out. And here are... Here are kind of the different shots that we heard a lot about. You know, we want to lob it deep over here. We want to lob it deep over here. A lot of people were talking about, you know, a grip and rip top spin here in the middle. And, you know, my whole thing was, look, you're getting stretched out here in the middle. The stroke mechanics are not that great. So you have to be able to recognize that if you don't have great stroke mechanics, even though when you're maybe right in here, and you see this volley coming back, and you're thinking, hey, man, if I can get there, I'd love to crush the ball, topspin dipper between the two guys right down the middle of the court. But at some point, you have to come over here and 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 be honest with yourself going, you know what, I'm stretched out. I just can't do that. My footwork's taking me backwards. So either it's going to be a lob, uh, a lob, or the shot that I want us to start thinking about is, you know, you could take this as a slice forehand, and you could play a slice forehand right down between uh, these two guys, right down the middle. It would be slow and low, meaning that it's not going to stay up here where it gives either one of these guys an opportunity to put it away. And if you can get it down low, you know, now you give Brian a chance to kind of step forward in here and maybe do something with it. Or someone else have been talking about, you know, why not just sort of feather it over in here? And I think that's a possibility, but, um, y you know, that's really going to be a, a, a real touch shot. So, you know, the th shot I want us to kind of think about here is a slice forehand uh, right down here in the middle or right in front of someone or right in front of someone. 
And uh, that's not what we're going to see here. This is going to be very anticlimactic. What we see here is Phil now try to go for the lob, and he's trying to lob uh, over Paul. And, you know, he misses the lob by what? Uh, it's not much. You know, it's about a foot or so. So, you know, I know that's an anticlimactic finish to this point. And what I want to tell you is if you guessed a deep lob here, good choice. If you guessed a deep lob here, great choice. If you guessed grip and rip here, I think that's a bad choice. I really do. I just don't think you're set up to, with, with a good stroke mechanics. You know, and the other thing to think about, too, is that if you even if you are set up with good stroke mechanics here in the middle, if, if you run over and you drill it, you really drive it, you know, look at look look at where Phil ends up. I mean, he's going to end up over on this part of the court. This is going to be wide open, which doesn't give him enough time to have good stroke mechanics where he can drive the ball here. And the reality is, since he's moving here, he's going to need another step in this direction after he drives it to be able to kind of recover. Now what happens if that's the case? These guys, unless it's a clean winner, these guys have the ball, and Phil's kind of hung out to dry. So, again, I don't think the topspin drive, a flat drive, or the topspin ripper here is a good choice. But I do like the, the slice forehand that is slow and low, gets down, doesn't give these guys anything to work with here in terms of, of, of a put-away opportunity, gives Brian something to work with, and allows Phil enough time to kind of get back here in the court and recover. So there you have it. Let me know right below this video what your what are your comments, what's your feedback, uh, and or any questions, right? Looking forward to hear to seeing what you have to say. Have a great day out there.